Well, Mike, thank you for joining us. Um, it has not been the easiest year for your business, has it? It has not. It's been, it's been a disappointing year. Our sales have been uh, down low single digits. We're used to a pretty consistent track record uh, of growth. Um, you know, we're facing a, somewhat of a challenge, cyclical um, time in a few of our core businesses. Uh, you know, the fashion business is down in the, in the industry. Uh, we're facing some headwinds from sort of changing behaviors, how consumers engage with video. Um, but we're very confident in the direction. Um, so we're excited about where we're headed. We want to get this year behind us uh, and get back to more consistent growth. Uh, a couple of your investors stopped by my desk back here to ask me if I was going to interview you. And what, they sort of both expressed similar sentiments, which is a year ago you were fairly positive. So what changed and is it fixable? I think it's definitely fixable. So I would say this year is sort of that confluence of a few tough events, some of our core categories um, down in the industry, and we would have liked to have gained more share in a down industry, but I think we're battling that pressure. Um, we've been very focused on this HSN integration, so a lot of heavy lifting to kind of reset uh, HSN that creates some short-term pressures on the business. And then we're navigating this sort of broader change, people reducing their linear TV viewing, expanding viewership on other platforms. What we feel good about is our customer base is very stable. So we think we need to get through some of the short-term pressures and just lean into how we evolve this model to be more relevant on more digital platforms. And I think as we do that, we'll get back to the kind of growth we're accustomed to. All right, I mean, your last quarter, which was just reported uh, a, a week or so ago, home business down 45 million in the quarter, beauty business up 9 million, but down 4 million for the year, jewelry business down 20 million. Um, those are all fixable? They are. I mean, there, there are definitely shifts in our business, so we're reducing our uh, jewelry business. We don't see that as a growth category for us. Our focus is win in fashion, uh, win in beauty, win in kitchen and culinary. Those are businesses where we can be highly differentiated. Uh, and so you'll see us lean into much more proprietary development in those categories, exclusive collections, launched a great uh, Isaac Mizrahi and New Balance collaborations. It's sort of fun things you can't find elsewhere. Our culinary business, the stories we can tell, um, sort of uh, you know, great entertainment programming coupled with commerce. So you know, we're not trying to win in every category. We're not trying to win with every customer. But in our strategic businesses, we, we see those getting back to growth. Right. Uh, well, you mentioned, of course, being a linear television network. Yeah. You're going to lose subscribers. It's a theme we've talked about throughout the day with any number of our guests. Like a, a brick and mortar retailer, do you have to rely more on online to try to make up for that? Has digital become more important to your business? Digital becomes more important, but the way we think about it is we have this amazing brand that we want to manifest over all video-related platforms, right? So as uh, traditional pay TV subs go down, you see this explosion in digital video consumption. And so we're, we want to be wherever people are consuming uh, video, whether that's on a skinny bundle, whether that's live streamed on our own mobile platform, um, whether that's on a Roku device. We're, we're a top app on Roku with this great immersive experience combining all of our QVC and HSN content. So the negative is the decline in pay TV uh, viewership. The positive is all these new interactive platforms that, that, that enable us to create a much more engaging experience. We just have to help our customers get to those new platforms. How do you help them do that? It's, it's lots of a variety of marketing approaches, paid marketing approaches, working with partners like Roku. They've been great at helping promote what we do, which again is why I think we've emerged as a top app on Roku. And once you get to that experience, uh, you realize it's actually a much more immersive, interactive experience than the old pay TV model. So we feel good about that. We get we're in a transition period, but we can push through that. How would you describe the consumer right now? I know in your call you said it's a choppy retail environment. It is choppy. I mean, you know, overall, I think the consumer is okay. Uh, clearly, we've been surprised that the core fashion categories, beauty, kitchen, all those are down um, in the industry uh, this year. Um, so that's been a bit of a surprise. It's a promotional environment. We all get that. But I think we just have to do that much more to give her something unique and different that she can't find uh, anywhere else. But you're certainly seeing with the spate of recent retail reports, a few winners, but a lot who are challenged. 
Um, so well, the mall-based retailers certainly are challenged. Uh, at the same time, Target is is uh, Target, in the cover. Target's doing an amazing job. TGX seemed to be pretty strong this week. Walmart, Costco, all fine. I don't I don't know how to where you where you put in HSN and QVC, yeah. how they fit and, into that. And, and that's where our view is. Let's not worry so much about the consumer because the reality is there are people that are out there gaining share. We want to be a share gainer. Um, and that's where we have to up our investment in these new platforms, in product differentiation, in marketing. We think as we do that, we can be in the share gainer category. Right. Liberty uh, always keeps a close eye on capital allocation. Yes. Um, you guys have not been buying stock back lately. Why not? You know, I, I think the reality is the market hasn't rewarded us for buying back uh, stock. Uh, I certainly think we'll be buying back stock in the future, but we'll be opportunistic about it to kind of do it at the right time. But we've also been trying to look holistically at the capital structure. Clearly with tax reform, there are some benefits to reducing some of the debt level, uh, retiring some of these uh, exchangeable instruments that we have. So we're trying to take a broad approach. We're also upping our investment in the business. So we always start there. And so we have a higher level of capital spend this year than we've ever had before. We're, restructuring our fulfillment networks to reduce delivery times to the customer. We're uh, upping our investment in these new digital platforms I mentioned. So we're going we're gonna to invest in the right way for healthy long-term growth. Yeah, you, you mentioned fulfillment, and I noticed as well that you said Thanksgiving following later than previous years, you're going to have a shorter window to engage yeah. customers. Um, December 21st being your last ship date. You haven't quite gotten overnight the way that Amazon has, have you? We don't, you know, it's, it's, for us, it's not, it's not an investment our customer wants to pay for. She's not looking for that instant gratification. She's coming to us without necessarily high purchase intent. She's being inspired by what she sees, and she's okay waiting a few days. So we want to reduce our delivery times, cut a couple days out of delivery, but we're not trying to get to, to overnight. I think if we're in that three to four day range, uh, that's what our customer wants. We can do that in a way that's uh, financially okay for us and I think attractive for the customer. So when you and I sit down a year from now, if we do here at the same conference, I can measure my life by it at this point, <laughs> right. are you going to be talking a better story to me and telling me how things did turn around in some of these key categories? You know, I don't want to predict the future. I would just say we believe in where we're going. We've been very open with the investors. That we're not trying to put a timeline on exactly when the, we turn the corner. We want to make the right investments, make the smart choices, not play to the quarter. Um, so I don't want to predict exactly where we'll be a, a year from now, uh, but I'm confident we will find a way to get this business back to healthy growth. Well, Mike George, we always appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you, David. I appreciate Mike, it. Mike George is CEO of Curate.